I'm routinely surprised by the popularity that surrounds the Conflict games by British developer Pivotal, easily one of the most average yet well-liked franchises, particularly when my lukewarm video continually gets views and comments pushing me to finally going back and checking out Desert Storm 2. It's by no means a classic, yet the substantial refinement of the gameplay makes for a semi-decent squad-based action title amidst an off-forgotten war. Released in 2003, barely a year after the first game and only a few months after the invasion of Iraq, it was an impressive success for a budget title with middling reviews. Much of this is due to the game being multi-platform and entirely playable in co-op, which was quite fun back in the day, but I really don't have the interest or the time to organise something like that again. Sorry if you wanted that. Console versions of Desert Storm 2 are readily available and arguably better than the PC port due to the split-screen co-op and auto-aiming, which makes the combat a bit easier. The PC port did work pretty well, although with the high resolution, the blurry textures become very apparent. As of now, there's no legal method of acquisition, so you know what that means. What particularly attracted me back to playing it again is the Gulf War setting. It was just as the Cold War ended, with a unipolar world emerging, exhibited in full force when Saddam invaded and annexed Kuwait in 1990, prompting a multinational military reaction that saw Iraq's battle-hardened armies almost annihilated. It's a shame more Middle Eastern conflicts aren't explored, for their operational scale and brutal intensity would make for some excellent, while meaningful games. The story of Desert Storm 2 is non-existent beyond choosing to play as either a Delta Force or SAS squad who have different in-mission and cutscene dialogue, otherwise it's the exact same game. This is pretty cool as both units did undergo intense operations in supporting coalition forces and wiping out Saddam's Scud missiles. It's also always interesting playing as non-US forces in a historical war. No surprise the SAS option is the most popular choice. Otherwise it's bare bones stuff with a couple of pre-rendered cutscenes of stiff animations with little character. Desert Storm 1 heavily focused on hiking through the desert and splashing those scud launchers, occasionally dealing in defensive or urban battlefields. Desert Storm 2 is much more about the latter, with your squad completing various missions in cities, military depots, refineries, dockyards, and chemical plants loosely connected and inspired by real events. Mission objectives are relayed through neatly presented satellite videos by a commander in a succinct manner, oddly precedent of what COD 4 used a few years later. The tasks are usually destroying marked vehicles, defending an objective, clearing a zone, or disarming some explosives. The most it ever deviates is during a prison break we have to scavenge gear, otherwise it's very linear. It's disappointing that there's no planning or equipment selection before a level, you just go from the briefing right into the game. Considering console squad shooters like SOCOM supported equipment customization, it just seems lazy and uncaring to be so shallow. You don't even get different weapons depending on nations selected. It's a strange hodgepodge where Delta have Spaz shotguns and PM rifles, while the SAS have M16s, M60s, and M9 handguns. The conflict games as a whole retain the same third-person shooter controls game to game. There's no squad leader, you can swap between characters on the fly for the respective abilities. You have basic movement controls and can switch to a first-person mode for more accurate shots. Ordering troops is simple enough with remappable commands and direct ordering of specific team members. Staying prone is actually a great way to avoid enemy fire, so it's worthwhile telling everyone to hit the ground in a prolonged firefight. The PC version removes the aforementioned auto-aim function used on consoles, making aiming in third person oddly stiff and inaccurate, even when it seems your crosshair is lined up. This requires frequent switching to first person to reliably hit enemies. It creates a weird flow to the action, where you're constantly stopping, proning, and switching camera every few seconds. You can't really die in the game, simply applying one of the many dozens of medkits seemingly heals the most grievous injuries, be it from explosives or high caliber rifles. Unlike the first game, it's a mission failure if you let any squadmates die. I understand most players would avoid that anyhow, but it was pretty neat how your teammates could be replaced in the first game. It's quite easy to abuse this feature against tanks, whereby you lay down some smoke grenades and then send your engineer to plant a C4 charge, and then fucking blow yourself up. Nice. While the tactical options for your squad are little more than wait, follow, and hold fire, your teammates have decently competent AI, which enables Desert Storm 2 to have plenty of cool battles against dozens of enemies. On their own, your teammates will heal themselves, follow orders quickly, and act somewhat dynamically like tossing a grenade through a window. They can be easily set up to provide covering fire when moving through an area, and get out of harm's way most of the time. It leans far more into video game action than anything realistic, but that's alright when it's executed well enough. Unlike a more traditional tactical shooter where you're encouraged to use equipment, there's little need here. With levels this straightforward and the abundance of enemies, the inclusion of anti-tank mines and claymores are just redundant. You wipe out hundreds of Iraqi soldiers in a single mission, mostly a breeze as long as you're stocked up on ammo and a few spare medkits. 
the only real opposition are tanks, requiring a bit more caution and some RPG rounds. Breaking up the usual on-foot gameplay are a couple of vehicle-focused sections such as driving a jeep or an APC. These are fine I guess, except the compacted levels really don't allow much maneuverability or options beyond clearing an area of tanks before hopping out and moving on. It's too easy to get blindsided by RPGs and grenades, and you can't order your squadmates to use the vehicles themselves, so there's no combined arms action. Nevertheless, it's a hard game, though for purely artificial reasons. There's only two saves per level working as your checkpoints, which is initially fine, but then there's levels that stretch 45 minutes, meaning at best you're redoing 10-15 to 15 minutes of progress when you die. The game makes a habit in the later sections to stop resupplying you, making the onslaught of infantry quite annoying. If you want to switch equipment, you have to stop and scroll through your inventory, leaving you entirely vulnerable to enemy fire, instead of simply having hotkeys for essential items like medkits. While the enemy AI is borderline brain dead, they start getting equipped with RPGs, meaning insta-kills for your entire team unless you break them up more, but you can't section them off unless you're playing cooperatively. Admittedly, shooting an enemy about to toss a grenade, having them drop it and explode, is really fucking neat. Despite all its roughness, there weren't any game-breaking bugs across the 5-hour campaign, at least in my playthrough aside from some hit detection issues and struggling to press a button or two. Although there isn't much to do after finishing the game aside from replaying it on a high difficulty with a different squad. Desert Storm 2 is a competent enough tactical shooter that I get a nostalgic kick out of, but I feel that its saving grace, split screen co-op, is the strongest draw that is sorely absent on the PC version. Thankfully, copies are extremely cheap and it can run on modern OS's without much jerry-rigging, and the setting is still very interesting. It was a different time, well before the overabundance of modern military games which themselves gave way to the outright cynicism and trying to make a statement. In this way, it's almost charming how straightforward the game is, making it a light recommendation for those intrigued, but much more so if you've got a buddy to play with. <laughs>